So let's recap what we did last time. What we did last time, we 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 went over the basics of geometry, which was well, what is geometry, the study of lines, two D shapes, three D shapes, just um, points, lines, and planes, um, basic transformations. Actually, I don't think we got into transformations. We'll do that today. Um, we went over the distance formula, which is right here. Um, connecting it to the Pythagorean theorem. And then we got into angles with parallel lines, perpendicular lines, uh, different types of angles, which was complementary angles, which add up to 90, supplementary, which add up to 180. Um, the different pairs that make up complementary and supplementary, because one of them is um, two right angle pairs make a supplementary angles, one acute and one obtuse make supplementary, two acute angles make up complementary. So we ended off with this diagram right here. And what this diagram right here is, is called a transversal. And th this is a very important concept in geometry. And I even wrote like a little song about it just to get a little bit of an intro. So it kind of goes like this. You have a transversal, a universal concept that has parallel lines with one intersecting. A transversal creates angles that originate that are complementary, supplementary, or the same size, depending on their type. So a transversal is has basically has parallel lines with one line intersecting. And you can have multiple parallel lines with the line intersecting. So this diagram right here has um two parallel lines with one intersecting. Here you have three parallel lines with one intersecting. Another thing that we could do is we could have like three parallel lines with two lines intersecting. This looks kind of trippy. So I guess for the sake of whatever we do here, we'll just have one intersecting line. Because if you have two, I guess you get into things that are pretty complicated. So I guess one thing that we can notice here is that like when we have parallel lines, these two lines right here don't create any angles by themselves because, you know, as we went over last time, angles are created when you have like line segments or rays, and these are just two lines that don't intersect. So that's why you have this line right here that's in that intersects and a transversal creates angles that originate that are complementary, supplementary, or the same size. You can see that now we have a bunch of angles here that are different, that have different measures. And the goal is to find out what these angle measures are because I know that that's a pretty common question that you get in geometry and it's also pretty fun to kind of deconstruct transversals and find out what the different angle measures are. It might seem pretty difficult to do this like off the bat so that's why to make things easier for us there are, there are different types of angles in a transversal that have different properties to them and so if you know the properties of these angles, it will be pretty easy. The, these are the, the five different angles, pairs that we're going to go over. Vertical angles, um, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, same side interior, and corresponding. We already went over complementary and supplementary angles uh, last time, and we already know what they are. So now let's go over alternate interior angles, which are highlighted in the blue right here. We're going to go to, uh, we're going to keep doing the, the song that I did for transversals, but kind of on the same tune. I wrote these kind of last minute, so I don't know if they'll match up properly, but alternate interior angles are on opposite sides, but also inside. These two angles are the same measure. It's the same for alternate exteriors. Such a pleasure. I think I got it but I'm just going to say these. So alternate interior angles are on opposite sides, but they're on the inside. What does that mean is like where the parallel lines, like this area right here are the um, the insides of, of the parallel lines. So alternate interior angles are alternate. So they're on opposite sides and they are, um, they're interior to each other. Oh, uh, I have a question. Um, so you know where like the green line is? inside of the um I forgot what it was called inside of the other lines um oh, oh, oh wait are, are you talking about like what these are uh yeah well I just wanted to ask like if there was a blue line there and then one opposite of that would that still call as an alternate interior angle um wait so I'm not uh are, are you talking about like these two angles right here or... but, but, like if there was a blue line on the green line and then like opposite of that the these two yeah is that still alternate interior angles yes they are okay 
I just put like one example, but there's like many in here. There, there, there's these two right here. Um, so these two angles always have the same measure. I guess for a pretty fun exercise, we can kind of deconstruct this and figure out why, but we, we will do that after we cover all the other angle pairs because we'll be uh, building off of each other. And this is kind of the um, an introduction to proofs, I guess, if we try to figure out why things work the way they do. Um, so the like what we said here, these two angles are the same measure. It's the same for alternate exteriors. Such a pleasure. So alternate exterior angles are basically... Uh, opposite sides I, I might do these I might do alternate exterior angles in a different color so alternate exteriors are these so they are on opposite sides but they're outside because this area right here are outside the parallel lines so they're alternate exteriors I guess with this knowledge what would the other pair of alternate exterior angles be um on the like other side on the outside but opposite yeah the, these two right here yeah these two will always have the um same measure alternate alternate interiors and alternate uh, exteriors um now let's get into um you know what i'll leave these i'll leave these here um yeah just know that uh, these two are a pair and these two are a pair it might be a bit confusing because i use the same color for both but um hold on let me just erase one of them oh so I guess like since you learned about a uh, same side interior, I think the, the, this should be pretty easy to go over. Um, same side interiors are the opposite. There are they are on the same side inside the parallel lines. These two angles are supplementary, which means they add up to one hundred eighty. All right. So these two are same side interiors, and they they and you notice that one of them is acute, the other one is obtuse, and these both will always add up to um one hundred eighty degrees, and the the same side interiors here would be these two right here so which means that um the um measures of the alternate um interior angles right here it's just 180 minus the other one so like if this was uh 30 degrees and this one would also be 30 degrees then by convention these two would be 150 degrees because alternate interior and alternate interior angles are uh, congruent and same side interior are supplementary. So already we already know these four angle measures just by using these properties. Okay. So the 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 last two angle pairs that we're gonna do before we get into like heavy proofs, or at least where we try to solve for angle measures, are um corresponding angles, which are basically the same angle, but it's like translated up versus down i'll create like a new transversal for these two so i don't know the best way to explain what a corresponding angle is without like showing it to you but it's the like it's just the same angle but it's like translated up so if this thing was like moved up and to the right it's the same angle um so th those two are corresponding these two right here are corresponding because the, this one is moved up to the to the left and it's shrunk in a little bit but the but, but these ones always have the same measure uh these um these two are corresponding so i i guess you you get it right yeah and the last one is vertical angles like vertical angles are what share a point so and and these two are always the same and it's really easy to prove why this is because let's say if you have this angle right here is 30 degrees this angle is supplementary right right so this would be 150 and then this angle right here would be supplementary to this so this would be 30 this would be 30 and then this would be 150 because these two are supplementary that uh, that's why you you don't really have to do this every single time you know that um so because we we already did this once we know that whenever we have two angles that are vertical to each other that share a point right here these two will automatically be the same right yeah now let's do this this little practice where we identify measure um measures of angles 
And this would be, let me move this downward a little bit. Um, okay, so th this will be like a little bit of an introduction to proofs. We're not going to do like formal proofs or anything like that, but we will um, practice Id identifying angles by using all of these properties. Um, yeah, so let's say we have this parallel. So let's say that we have this angle right here and it is 25 degrees. Um, and we want to find what the measure of this angle is. So let's call this angle angle A. This is angle B. This is C, D, um, E, F, uh, G, H. I don't know if I missed any, but we, we need to... So what we're given to us is that um, 25 degrees um, is the measure of um, angle A. Wait, let me find a way to rewrite this. Um, angle A. The measure of A is 25 degrees. I think I might need to move this down even more. Uh, or I could just put this on the, on a new page. Yeah, this will just go all the way down there. Okay, so this is the information that's given to us. So I, I, I guess in order to like write a proof, we first say that, okay, th these would be our statements. And these would be our reasons. Okay, so the, the I guess the first statement we can make is that A is 25 degrees. And the reason is that it's just given to us. It's just information that's given. Okay, so what is the next thing that we can do? So like, what's another angle that we can find the measure of that will eventually... Um, well, H is like the exact opposite. So it would be 25. Yes. And so so we can say that um, H is 25. That's how the, like, that, that is our next statement. And why did we say that H is 25? So like, what's the reason? It's congruent. Is that the word? <laughs> Um, we I, I guess we can cite vertical angles because oh. these two are vertical. Okay, so vertical. Angles. So what can we do next? Um, E and C are both um, 25. E and C? Yeah. How did you get that? Because it's like above it and it's like the same measurement. Oh, 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 wait, don't wait. The first thing you have to do is to say that C is 25. That'll be the first thing you do. Because and then you then you would say that um alternate interior angles. I guess like you, you have to go one step at a time. Okay. But you are correct. But, but but I guess like sometimes it, it is important to go one step at a time just to make sure that that you don't mess up. Right. Yeah. So the the first thing that you probably did was say that um A and C are alternate interior, so that would mean that C is twenty five. Right. Um, and then we would say alt interior. Mm. And then E is 25 because E and H are alternate exterior. Um, yeah, actually. Yeah, E and H are alternate exterior. Um, e is 25. Uh, then you can say alternate exterior. And then what would be next? Um, and then... A and D are supplementary, meaning B would be 155 degrees. Oh, um, oh, oh yeah. Um, B would be 155. And then we would cite supplementary angles, right? Right. And I, I think with all this information, we can find what F is. Right? Right. So what would we do next? Um, 
Is that D, the one next to C? Um, yes. Okay, so then B and D would be alternate interior angles. Yeah. So D would be 155, and we can cite um, alternate interior angles. Okay. And then, yeah. Okay, and then D and F are um, vertical angles. Yeah. And so are B and G. And so we reached the end because like, cause our, our goal was to find what the angle of F is. So we found it. Vertical. Oh, wait, I didn't have to go through all of this. I could have just said B and F after. Yes, you could have. Oh, <laughs> but I uh the but, but I just I kind of wanted you to do it, but you didn't know that that we were finding F, or or at least or at least you you thought that we had to find all of them, right? Which I mean you can. There are there are several ways that we can reach there, and 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 it's a good thing that we found what all these angles were because extra practice, right? But vertical angles. So yeah, we found that um the measure of f and this is a little introduction to proofs. So so this is a very simple proof that we did where we wrote the different statements and we write why we think they are the way they are. Which I think it's, it's stuff that we've always kind of been doing but now we're kind of making it official, I guess, with with how we write it. Um I I guess it's pretty informal, but we we can we can probably do one more. But we can make um... Are you talking about like angles? Because um, we missed B and G. We missed B. Oh, wait, no, I meant that we can do another problem. Oh, right. Yeah, but this one, I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated. But it can definitely be something that, that, that we can do. Um, let's create this. Will, uh, now I'm going to do like three different parallel lines just to spice things up. So it's going to be three and I'm going to, oh. Okay, and, and I will put a few restrictions on this problem. Um, a, I'm going to label them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Did, did I miss any? Oh, uh, yeah, one L. Oh, okay. All right, let me think about this really quick. Let's say that um, I, I will give one angle measure. We can just say that G, the, this time I'll give the measure of a supplementary angle. So let's say that G would G is 135 degrees. And we need to prove that that okay, so we need to prove that um, that G and A are the same. Um, without saying that they're corresponding angles, because you could just say they're corresponding and therefore they're the same. <laughs> without saying without corresponding. I guess this will be our way of proving why corresponding angles are the same. But I might need to move this down even more. I, I don't know if we'll even get here, but I think we might. Okay. So this right here is um statement. So I can't say G and A are corresponding angles, but can I say other angles are cor corresponding? Um, I guess we you you can't use the uh, corresponding angle uh 
statement at all. Okay. But because because if I, I guess that that might kind of defeat the point. Right. Yeah. So what would the first thing we can, we can say? We can say that G is 135 because it's it's just information given. Whenever you're writing a proof, make sure that given is the first thing you write. I guess just to make it easier. Okay. So what would be the next thing that we that we can do? All the other uh, properties are like are uh, available for you to use except for corresponding. Okay. Um G and E are vertical angles. Yes. So so what what does that mean? It means that E is, is also is also 135. Right. Vertical angles. Um have you done proofs before or is this your first time? Or Sorry, like, no, I said like you you said that you learned about these angles before, but have you done proofs before or is this your first time? Um I actually don't remember. I think I might have done something like this, but it might have been ease care. Okay. Okay, and then E and A are alternate interior angles, meaning that the angle A is 45 degrees. Wait, no, I, like, wouldn't A be 135 degrees too? Because they're alternate interior? Oh, right. Um, uh, and then I guess we need one final step, um, which is just G is congruent to A, right? Right. G is a, I, I forgot how to write the congruent symbol. <laughs> G is congruent to A because math, <laughs> or at least I don't know, because they're equal. I, I guess I, I I don't know what, like what the term would be, that they both have the same measure. So they would just be congruent. <laughs> That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I I I don't know I don't know how to give like harder problems, <laughs> but yeah. Do you have any questions on any on any, anything so far? I know. All right. Another thing that's important in geometry is just transformations, and we can just recap all of them, which are um reflections, translations, and rotations. Um, I I guess I would feel that um rotations are the um hardest concept I guess to get but we um r rotations always happen counterclockwise you have 90 degrees counterclockwise 180 degrees counterclockwise um 270 and uh 360 and I think I wrote like a little song to help with this but I don't remember it from the top of my head maybe I'll link it or like give it to you sometime but um there's the um Reflections, translations, and rotations are incredibly important. And whenever you um, reflect or like, oh, oh, oh wait, I, I forgot another thing to mention, which is like, you can also scale an image. So like, if if you if you if you have a figure that looks like this, you can multiply all the coordinates by two and um, increase the size by two. Yeah, and, and that, that doesn't fall under these three. So if you scale an image and if you like do reflections and rotations and stuff, that is known as a dilation. And there are plenty of uh, uh, dilations that happen on the uh, coordinate grid. Um, okay, yeah, I learned some of this too a while ago though, so I probably forgot it. Okay, um, I, I guess we could go deep into dilations, not entirely sure but because we did go over transformations for um algebra but um maybe that can be something that we do for like three minutes and, and until i need to restart the zoom meeting um so we we, we can have um uh, something we have a, a square like this this is not a really good square but I guess, I guess the points are like um, uh, two, five, um, two, one. And then you have uh, one, five, uh, one, one. Okay, let's say that we want to rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise. Um, how would we do that? Um, so like... To, to rotate something 
90 degrees, you take every x, y value and you switch it to minus y, x. So what would, what would we do for this point right here? Um, it would be negative 5 and 2. It would be negative 5, 1. And then the, the, the next point would be negative 5, 2. And then the next point would be, the, this one right here might be uh, uh, negative 1, 1. And then this last point might be negative 1, 2. Uh, we, we can try to graph this really quick. Uh, so negative 5, 1 would be like right here. Uh, negative 5, 2 would be uh, up here. Negative 1, 1 would be down here. Negative 1, uh, 2 would be up here. Okay, so, so this thing has been rotated counterclockwise. Because it's rotated counterclockwise, it goes from quadrant 1 all the way to, um, to quadrant 2 right here. And if we and then if we keep rotating it, we'll eventually get back to where we are. But I guess if we wanted to dilate it even further, we could like reflect it or scale it by a certain amount. But yeah, that is how we um do dilations. Right. Okay. I, I guess if, if we scale it by like three, this would be uh minus fifteen three uh minus fifteen six this would be minus three three and then negative three and six right so that is a recap on transformations we covered how transformations work in algebra but in geometry i mean i, I guess it, it is kind of similar but now we're, we're getting into like re reflecting rotating translating dilating um so I I guess technically if we were to like because you know how how we did like a x minus h squared plus k I guess I guess maybe if we like multiply this whole thing by two if we put two a right here then it would technically be a dilation but it's not really a shape it's just a line so that's why we wouldn't call it a dilation but here we have a bunch of shapes and we create the and I guess you know how these shapes are created in the coordinate plane because you created them on Desmos by limiting the domain and the range and using inequalities to shade them. So at least that's yeah. that's partially the reason why I asked you to do it. Yeah. All right, now let's resume our introduction to triangles. Okay, when we have the in an introduction to triangles, the, the, the most important thing that we're gonna, gonna have to do involving triangles is um, proving that triangles are similar or congruent and also knowing like what the different types of triangles are. I guess I can go over the three most important types of, um, of right triangles that you might need to know, because we're also gonna figure out why the Pythagorean theorem works. So might as well. Okay, so we have, um, I guess we only have two types of right triangles, important right triangles that we need to cover. The first one is a um, 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we have, um, the, this is the 90 degree angle right here. And then this is 45. And this angle right here is also 45. And I, I guess what's important for triangles, which you probably already know is that they have to add up to 180 degrees. So we, we, we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And then the other triangle that we have that's also important is a, a 30, 60, 90 triangle looks something like this um 90 uh the, this is um 60 and this is 30. one thing that is incredibly important to know for triangles is that the uh the, the length of the sides of a triangle and the measure of an angle of a triangle are are correlated in some way so that's why when you have two angles that are 45 degrees both of their sides are equal because they're the angles are equal right so these two um uh angles are are equal to one another um so i i guess there is a way to um know what the different 
um, angle me um what the different sides of the of this triangle are and we can do this by using the pythagorean theorem so let's say that the hypotenuse of this triangle is one and these two uh, sides are the same so we do a squared plus uh, b squared equals um, c squared which is one and then a and and b are the same so this would be a squared plus uh, a squared equals one you would then have two a squared equals one um a squared equals one half and so a would equal uh, one over the square root of two And, and, and so that is what these two um, sides are. And the, uh, there's a very interesting thing about how a 30, 60, 90 triangle is formed. Uh, I, I guess I'm pretty sure you heard of um, equilateral triangles, isosceles triangles, and uh, saline triangles, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so e equilateral triangles have all the same sides. Isosceles have two sides that are the same. Saline probably has like all three sides are different. There's also acute triangles, obtuse triangles, various different types of triangles. So I guess with how a 30, 60, 90 uh, triangle is constructed, um, it is actually constructed from an equilateral triangle. So if you have an equilateral triangle right here, if all three sides are the same, what would all three angles be equal to? Um, They would all be equal to... Sixty. Yes. So this would be sixty degrees. Uh, this would also be sixty, and uh, this would also be sixty. So what would happen if we were to split this triangle? Okay. So um, let's say that um, uh, what length do you want to give each of the sides of the the thirty sixty nine of this triangle? Like you can pick any number, but I have preferably an even number. Um, like two? Yeah, let's do it. So this is two, two, and two. What would happen if you were to, oh, what would happen if we had to split the 60 degree angle right in the middle? So if we were to split it right in the middle. Um, uh, just pretend that uh, these two halves are equal. These two angles would now become 30 degrees. And then it'd be 30, 60, 90? Uh, yeah, be, because it would be a 30, 60, 90 because these two angles are perpendicular. So this would be a 90 degree angle, which means right. that, uh, this, uh, the, this side right here would be one because it's half. And I guess now we need to find out what the, the measure of this one is, which if you plug in the Pythagorean theorem again, you would have um, one squared plus um, B squared equals c squared, which is four. So then b squared equals three, right? Mm. And so it would be the root three. So this would be one, root three, and two. Okay. I, I guess these two are um, incredibly important to know. Also for uh, trigonometry, which we're gonna we might actually get into trigonometry a lot earlier than than I thought we would. I, I guess if you're interested in like getting into sine, cosine, tangent, the unit circle, just all that important stuff because that because that's what we're getting into with with triangles. Um, I, I guess we can get into proving that triangles are congruent next time, but maybe we can just kind of get into like why the Pythagorean theorem works, or at least try to figure that out for the last five minutes. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, you work. I guess this is the first time that I'm doing this as well. <laughs> so let's see why we think that the Pythagorean theorem works. Or at least I don't know if this is way too complicated for the information that we have learned so far. 
I, I, because if it involves trigonometry, then we can kind of hold off on on the example on figuring out why why does the Okay, the because this is the first I'm trying to figure this out myself. Um Okay, I I guess one thing that I kind of found is um um okay let me do this really quick so what i found online is to um draw squares for each of these so this so this so this is the square of of a oh right and then there's a square on the each like side of the triangle yeah and so um yeah so I think that's where like a squared plus b squared equals c squared comes from because you're finding the ratios of the areas of the squares for like all of these sides because the area of this thing right here would be a squared. Uh, the area of this thing right here would be b squared. And then the area of this thing here would be c squared. And I guess it could also relate to the fact that a triangle is like half of a square or maybe I, I don't think so. But at least the, the part that we know now is where the, the a, the a squared, the b squared, and the c squared come from in the uh, in the equation. Um, okay, so there is a um, a proof using constructed squares. Um, so let me read through this real quick to see if I can um, if I can do this. Mm. I I think it, it might be something that I might have to to read into, um, but yeah, all, all all these images just look really weird. I might have to read through it, but at least now you okay. know, at least you know where um the the squares part comes from at least. Okay, so now the uh, next time we are going to uh, go through the proof of like triangles being congruent and all that through the four different methods, which I'm gonna give you a brief preview right now, which is um, SSS, which is side, 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 SAS, which is side, angle, side, um, ASA, which is angle, side, angle, and AAS, which is angle, angle, side. These are the four methods that we're gonna do to prove that triangles are similar and congruent. And for a bonus, we will do the hypotenuse leg theorem, which you can use for right triangles. And we will go into like uh, sine, cosine, and tangent and do a little bit of trigonometry. So that's what we're going to be doing next time. And I, I think the time after that, we're going to get into like, we're going to get into circles.